Welcome to Linda's Corner. My name is Linda Bjork, and today we're going to be talking about the ability to make positive changes in our lives. I'm delighted to welcome special guest, Reverend Rance Dunbar, the Chakra Doctor from Texas. Rance has overcome countless hardships in life, including poverty, homelessness, abuse, addiction, and more, to become a well-known healer and teacher. You can learn more about the Chakra Doctor on his website, chakradoctor.org, and I'll include a link in the description. Rans, thank you so much for joining with me today. Thank you for having me, Linda. It is a pleasure to be here. And hi, hi everybody out there, Linda's audience. How are you guys doing? <laughs> I am so glad that you're here. Would you be willing to start with your story of where you, where you started out and then how you turned into what you are today? Yes, so my story started in, so my story started in Las Vegas. So my father worked for the gaming industry, the, the gaming industry and in, um, in Las Vegas at the time. They're, my parents are from New Orleans, Louisiana. My father is from the West Bank. My mother is from the seventh war of New, of New Orleans. And so when my mother was pregnant with me, my father uh, had a gaming license and things of that nature. And there weren't any casinos in New Orleans at, in, a, in a year in the eighties, in the early eighties, late seventies. And so he went to Las Vegas to utilize his license. And so him and my mother had somewhat of a long distance relationship during pregnancy. And my mother used to visit him, um, used to visit him out there and one visit, her water broke and she had me at a women's clinic in Clark County, Las Vegas. And so that's how that, that's how I ended up being born in Clark County, Las Vegas hospital. I mean, a women's clinic in, uh, in, in Las Vegas. And after the immediate, almost immediately after that, probably not even, you know, a few months after that, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in my native town where, I should have I should have been born, but for some <laughs> strange reason, hey, I was born in Sin City, and so the uh, and so from there, um, I've never I, I I never witnessed my mother and my father together in the household together. Oh. So this was um, their break. Their divorce were was during was was during or right after my birth, and. With that, my, I watched my mom be a single parent until, you know, I watched my mom be a single parent. And then at about five years old, I, um, my, I started experiencing abuse from my stepfather, who was her husband at the time. And mm -hmm. so by five, from five and six and seven years old, that is, that was like a beginning of the horror story, abuse, broken bones, you know, witnessing my mom get um, the crap beat out of her, you know, and, and witnessing horrible things happen to her because a person didn't know how to express or control their lower selves. And so it, it moves forward into, you know, my mom dying at the age of 16 on Christmas Day, right, along with other close people in my family, or other close people who I, who I can consider um, unconditionally loved me. Right, they all died in in peak, you know, in, in important years, all back to back. You know, my grandmother, which was like my second mother, uh, my first cousin. I'm the only child of my mother and my father, um, and so my my cousin, he was like a brother to me. He died after my grandmother. Then after he died, then my mother died, and so it was it was a big, big, big time of okay. I just got over the horror story of you know child abuse and all of that. But now, in, enter into the horror story of okay, the one who, the person who I thought was going to be here for the long haul, has been taken taken away at you know as, as as a teenager, and that thrust me even more into a world of hopelessness, you know, um, anger, doubt, greed, you know, bitterness, hatred, jealousy, you know, superstition. You know, all of the negative emotions that comes with not being, not knowing how to articulate the emotion of grief during death, how to trans, transmute it and transform it into something higher. I wasn't taught the, I wasn't taught that even though my mother, you know, comes from a background of a spiritual and religious background, um, 
you, you know, in the black community, what I've seen is that, you know, a lot of vital things that we supposed to teach our children, um, it has missed us in a lot of ways, you know, and in an America period, there's a lot of things that we're supposed to teach our children that we literally hold off that conversation and we don't teach them and we let the world teach them in a screwed up manner instead of just being, you know, um, just being straight up and down honest blunt parents like my mother was to me. And so uh, the thing about, but the thing about uh, spirituality and things of that nature, so I always grew up in a, in a Christian home. Um, my mother was a Pentecostal Christian, but I also witnessed her be a hoodoo priestess as well and fused them together and was able to do both at the same time, right? And so these this was a, this was a unique background. I Also a unique background I, on the street that I grew up in on the West Bank of New Orleans. I had a, a, I had a white best friend, a black best friend, a, a, um, a Vietnamese best friend, and a Hispanic best friend, all on the, all on the same street together. So I was able to get multicultural um, access at an early age and know how to speak the different body languages and different cultural languages of um, different diasporas at an early age. Um, all of those things mixed with the horror stories made for a great, great uh, trial and error phase of my life. And that's right. I can say that trial of error phase had, had at least lasted until I was like about 30, 31 years old. Um, and and that was, you know, everything from addiction to a suicide attempts to, you know, following the wrong trends, following the wrong people, um, drugs, um, recidivism, you know, all of the things that plague um, black people in a poverty in, in a poverty in impoverished communities. And so coming from that background, poverty, homelessness, and all of those other things too, lack of fun, you know, I, I, I have I have a few. I'm Caucasian best friends. I asked them, you know, um, hey, have you ever had to worry about your lights getting turned up? And they're like, wow, no, we never had to worry about that day in my life. Right. It's a different reality. It's a, it's a different reality coming from the poverty state versus somebody who is teaching their children, hey, you're going to inherit this um, when I die. Right. right. <laughs> so, yes. So, you know, in, in, in an impoverished state, people sell their children or sell the souls of their children versus lift them up into the uh, state of wealth. Meaning you can be, you, your energy as a child can be used prematurely. Um, I, and I've seen in impoverished communities where women sell their, women sell their daughters to prostitution. I've seen, you know, where, you know, um, certain young people get entrapped into the snares of poverty because there are predators in the snares of poverty. And so a lot of the times in these group homes and all of these places like the, you know, child protective services are really a real horror story behind the scenes, man. You should just look at it um, behind the scenes. It's really horrible. So, you know, we have a lot of fiction of doing our infrastructure in America simply with the system that already exists, let alone building new systems, you know, to complement them. Um, and so coming from that background, you know, my father, uh, my, my father also, you know, father was, he he was also a Christian, but I also seen him do a little time exercising his um, religious practice as a Muslim, right? And he was one of the, he's what I would call the, you know, the sometime father, you know, when, you know, he's there sometimes and I, I, I interact with him how he sees fit in the form of, you know, visits and things of that nature. Um, credit, you know, all of that adds it, all of that adds it together, you know, made for a real, real, real poisonous environment of toxicity. Absolutely. It made for a real negative, pessimistic way of looking at life. It, even, though that, even though that wasn't the way I wanted to look at life, what other way could I look at it had I not been taught something different? Um, so, you know, this way of looking at life brought me into places like prison. And... In these places, it, it, and I can honestly say to everybody that's listening to me right now, um, without those times where I was actually locked up in prison, I don't think I would have become the person who I am today. Um, because in prison, you have two choices, stay the same or change. And you have all the time in the world. And you have all the time in the world to do it. If, 
you know, especially when somebody says, oh, you got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, and you're in there, though every single book behind you, I can read that. How long would it take you in your life, living your life, waking up, taking care of all of your worldly responsibilities, right? How long would it take you to read every single one of those books behind you? Uh, several months, at least. Several months, se- several months, several months at least, right? Every, every, every single book. I'd say several years. Okay. I, I, I would say that, given your schedule right now, the schedule that you possess, and everything that you do right now as a human being, okay. included with the fact that you have to read all the, every single book behind you, that'll take you years to do. That's right? true. That's true. Because there's a limited well, amount of time available. And I guess what you're getting at is when you're in prison, all of that time could be used doing this. Okay. All of that time could be used to read those books. And so mm-hmm. the time that it would take you to read all of those books, I can I got that time done in three, four, five years. Right? Gotcha. And so with that accelerated with that accelerated, I call it that microwave cook, you know, it was it was just a microwave cooking of self uh, of self teaching every time I went because even though you you go and you don't want to come back, it is your habits that must change, your mind that must change, the the, the people, the places, the things, and all of the things that I didn't know that you need to change in order. I didn't know that friends, kid uh, association brings on assimilation. I didn't know that I think therefore I am, and so I will attract you, right? I didn't know that hey if I keep speaking this negative thing in my life, it will keep regurgitating itself in the presence of my life, right? And so when you when when you look at all of the things that I did know, it's it's a miracle that I made it this far. It's a miracle that I even made it here today. Look at all of the ignorance, and and my name is Rance. And the root of ignorance is Rance, right? So look at all of the ignorance um, that I had to go through in order to trial and error my way into this level of spiritual mastery. So it was in, it was those times in um, prison that I was able, each time I was able to upgrade myself a little bit. And then I went back out and I went back to my old habits, my old ways. And I, I try to do the right thing the wrong way. Then I go back and just I upgrade myself a little bit. Okay. I think I got it this time. And I go back out and the world distracts me something you know, something happens, like life happens when you're on a mission and you're on a goal. And, you know, if you're not taught that, hey, you must buckle down and hatch and stay humble and keep going, you'll give up. You'll be like, F this crap. I don't want to do this. I'm, I'm going to do something else. This isn't meant for me. I, I know I shouldn't have done it anyway. All of, the ne- all of the negative things that you tell yourself when you are giving yourself an excuse to fail. And so, you know, um, of hanging around the people that I was hang, hanging around, and all of this stuff, it was just a cluster fuck of negativity that was that I just kept slowly but surely snipping away from my life. I can say that I slowly but surely snipped away every single negative vice snare and web that had me in, in, entangled, you know, um, over time. And so, and the final time is when the final the final time is when you know Shaco Doctor was birthed. And, you know, I, I became enlightened and um, I opened up my chakras, created my yoga and everything, uh, all of that. And completely, if a person, a lot of people meet me and I tell them my backstory and they say, nah, no way. You can have never in a million years been that person. And and, that, and, and that's the one biggest thing that I love, the, the drastic change in my life. So much so that, you know, this ninth grade job out and all of those negative things turned into a full-time entrepreneurship of health and wellness, turned into my own natural intracellular detox cleansing healing regimen. I've healed over 20,000 people. I've touched lives, life after life after life. I've improved. I, when, I, when the situation was down here, I came into the situation. I dedicated my positive energy, and now the situation is up here. I, you know, I, I've created entrepreneurs. I've done things for the human diaspora that you know you can never put in a, in a record book but, but it's forever etched into my soul into my being to the beings of the people that i help along the way and so you know netting a multi-million a business partner from mumbai india right starting an african-american starting an actual corporation with an indian american and making it successful 
into a, you know, a, a passive income business, right? Um, you know, married with my own kids and, you know, the things that my mother told me, now I'm telling them and, you know, all of the, all of the uh, things that I never thought I would make it to see or be. I am actually living, I'm actually living proof that, yes, you can change your life from nothing to something. You can go from zero to hero and it doesn't have to take forever. All it has to take is the effort that says you want to make a definite change. And it's going to be a burning desire, like they tell you in um, They Can Grow Rich. It has to be a burning desire. It has to be an obsession. You have to be so obsessed with doing the opposite of what you're doing now that when people see you, they don't even recognize you. Like, people see me today and wouldn't even recognize me versus the old. That's how much I've changed. I've changed so much that the old me, when people see the old me, it's a reminder of where one, one, of where one can come from and where one can end up. And so, you know, becoming, you know, in tune with the spirit, teaching people about their chakras, teaching people how to become positive thinkers, creating, you know, programs up programs and systems that help people just get into a positive state of being so that they can start attracting health, wealth, abundance into their life is just, it, I'm so grateful that I went through all of that horror. Be grateful for your horror story because it is there for a reason. It's there to teach you a lesson and that lesson is going to be a big, wonderful hero story. So I'm so, I'm so grateful that I went through all of the pain the torment, the anguish, the suffering, the lies, the cheating, the stealing, the the all of the ignorance, the, the, the stupidity, all of the times where I thought I wasn't going to make it, and all of the times where I, you know, even I, on the times, you know, forgiving myself for attempting suicide on myself, you know, all of these things, you know, just show me that when you're when you have a soul's mission and you're meant to be here, you better damn well follow it. Wow. Wow. Okay. You are one of my heroes and this is fantastic. You have so many incredible aspects to your story and the things that you have gone through and the things that you have experienced uniquely qualify you to reach a demographic of people that the others could not ever touch because they would say, you don't understand. You don't understand what it's like. And you can say, right. well, actually, I can because I have experienced this and I have experienced this and I have been there and I have done that. And so if people, it, you, you leave people without an excuse. And I think that that is beautiful and, and amazing. No excuse. That was, all right. So a little cheat code, guys. Um, when, I, when, when I tapped into my chakras and I created the FCA yoga exercise, the FCA yoga guided meditation. FCA stands for full chakra activation. And full chakra activation is a guided meditation where this is how I gained the name for chakra doctor. And it's a guided meditation where I guide one into physically feeling as the physical representation per permeating throughout your whole body, um, physically feel your chakras. And we have more than seven, like they, you know, the basic seven, like they teach us about and so it was creating that, that exercise is how I became chakra doctor. Now, through, through that exercise and through becoming, you know, um, this, this, this stage or spiritual guru, because, you know, that's how I, I was able to become business partner with, the, you know, with the Indian, you know, millionaire, because, you know, the chakras and that technology is in India, right? And so for a, for, you know, you know, for a black man to be teaching Indian people how to activate the highest points of their chakras, you know, that was a unicorn in California at the time, you know, at the time. <laughs> and the reason why I went to California um, to answer your question is because, um, first and foremost, New Orleans only has a small amount of people. And with something like the chakras and, you know, positive affirmations and, you know, a brand that's based in health and wellness, New Orleans is not the market for that, right? Um, the way you're going to say, hey, you're going to become this big, successful health and wellness brand in New Orleans by New Orleans, supported by New Orleans. There's not enough people, not enough, not enough people, not enough interest to, you know, to say, hey, I'm going to succeed in that. But go to the places where these things are plentiful at. And the one thing, and the one place where it was plentiful at was California. Smart. Millions of people who are interested in health and wellness, you know, health and wellness brands galore, 
know, vegan festivals and, you know, yoga forever, you know, name a yoga, it's out there. So it, that was the pool, that was the, the place where I needed to play. Um, and so I literally left everything behind in New Orleans and I flew to California and slept out of my friend's car and said, this is where I'm going to make, this is where I'm going to start it at. And by golly, here I am now, you know, on my own land, you know, and, and, it, and it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem like so long ago, because it was, it was only in what, 2017 when I, I incorporated in 2017. All right. I started, I, I created everything in 2015, but I licensed, trademarked, incorporated it, you know, got everything legit all the way up and down the board, ordained ministry and everything in 2017. So it's only been four years and some change that Dr. Gandhi and I have been doing this and we're already in the level of, you know, a passive income state independently. We're, we're doing it independently of our own marketing tactics, our own strategies, our own know-how and it has been um, a very, very beautiful thing to see that a ninth grade dropout, you know, kid from the gutter can now doctors come to me for vaccination exemptions in the medical field and, you know, police officers and, you know, people that work right now, people who are working right now in the public arena are coming and say, hey, shopper doctor. Let me get a vaccination exemption letter from you. Let me buy some miracle food from you so I can get a vaccination exemption letter from you. Man, hey, can you spirit can you attest to be my spiritual leader um as a pastor so that we don't have to get the jab? This is what my followers, you know, are coming to tell me. And 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 it bothers me to this day how did I how did I make it? Um and I always tell and people and I always just say, you know, it gotta be magic. It has to be a magic wine with a fairy godmother somewhere waving that <laughs> wine and just going mm, pop and twinkling her nose like the bewitch lady. And <laughs> And, and just making things, you know, just making things happen. So it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful chance to actually articulate that to people that come from those real, real tough bottom places where I come from, right? And also, it's a, it's a wonderful lesson that people who don't come from there get to learn. It's like I'm getting a chance to bridge the gap. I get a chance to, hey, I get a chance to articulate and talk to the highly educated and the people who never knew what, what it was like to eat ramen noodles versus, you know, the lowly educated and all they know is high fructose corn syrup and, you know, cereal and, you know, and, and pork. Right. And I get to, and I get to articulate to both worlds and get them to understand each other. Right. And so it's the, uh, it's a beautiful thing. That is amazing. And when you're teaching true principles, that applies to everyone. It does bridge gaps because yes. there shouldn't be a gap. Yes. Truth is truth. And it is the truth for, for every color. It is the truth for every gender. It is the truth for every socioeconomic standard. Truth is truth. And so that is beautiful that you're able to have something that you can connect with. So tell me a little bit more about this vaccination exemption letter. What, is, what are you doing? So, so, so um, as, as a natural holistic healer, and an ordained minister. Um, for those of you who work in the public arenas, the public arenas is the arenas that are controlled by the state and the federal government, um, like hospitals, firefighters, police officers, librarians, um, county workers, state workers, uh, bank uh, people who work at banks, or any kind of um, places that are man that are under the mandates of federal law or state government law. Um, when your rights, your rights in these arenas are paid. Their salaries in these arenas are paid by for our tax dollars. Are paid for by our tax dollars. Mm -hmm. Versus a private corporation, it's not. Private corporation, they can say, "Hey, you're going to get this vax, or you're not going to work here," and there's nothing you can do about it because it's a privately owned corporation. I do what I want with my corporation. But when it's a publicly, when it's a public, a public arena is considered public office. And public office has to follow the guidelines and regulations of federal law and state mandated law. And federal law and state mandated law states that you have the rights to for uh, to uh, what they call waiver to waive to waive any type of inoculations performed by any state or government entities due to, with with uh, with exemption reasons. And that exemption reason, some two of those exemption reasons are medical exemptions and religious religious exemptions do you know that it is your right in the united states constitution to freedom of religion just like you got a freedom of speech freedom to carry guns freedom
freedom to do this, freedom to do that. You have a freedom of religion. And so there are actual scriptures in the Bible that support that you're not supposed to be getting um, inoculated by the hands of men, but by the herbs and the fruits and the spices that God has uh, put here for you to partake in. So number one, as a ordained minister, I always recommend people to um, eat healthy. And when I say eat healthy, that's, you know, you know, the raw fruits and vegetables that are found in my miracle food detox regimen, as well as I tell people to activate their chakras and tune into the mother earth and get into spirituality and tune into and tune into that consciousness of Christ. You know, we get into caught into the character of Christ and not the consciousness of Christ. The character of Christ was cool, but the consciousness of Christ is who we are, who we are. We're able to walk, talk and act just like he did in the Bible. So, Let's analyze these things from a perspective, and that's considered spirituality as an ordained minister. So, that, and that considered that, and in, in the public arena, that that considered me a faith leader. So, I, as your faith leader, when you uh, either when you either um, when you purchase particular uh, products or services from the brand, you are automatically eligible for the vaccination exemption uh, attestation letters from me personally, signed by me. And with my brand trademark and logo, with my brand's trademark logo, my church ordination, um, and the ministry that ordained me as well. So my, my name is a reverend and my titles as founder and CEO of my FCA Inc. Um, will be your validation to exemption, medical exemption number one, because of the ingredients found in my all natural miracle food intracellular detox healing regimen okay it is 100 percent all natural ingredients and the vaccine is 100 percent all unnatural <laughs> which, it, which blatantly <laughs> that's 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 true <laughs> yes and so which blatantly contradicts this 100 percent all natural uh, all natural dietary regimen that you are taking and it kind and it immediately puts your health at risk that's number one and then with and 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 then with this is the spirituality of it. We are practicing this regimen of all natural eating, all natural cleansing and detoxing because it strengthens the spirit and it promotes a higher level of spirituality, which now falls in the level of within the world of religion. So my religious credentials as well as my corporate credentials um, are the stamps are the are the heavyweights that make the vaccination exemptions work for the people who work in the public arenas? Now, for the pub, for the private arenas, it is it, I've seen it work, but it is not guaranteed. But for the public arenas, they automatically give you a option for exemption. So if you're at, if you're working at any public arena and they're trying to mandate the vaccination, all you have to do is say I file for an exemption, and they're going to tell you bring me your exemption proof. And you're going to bring them that exemption proof from my brand and my church. And voila, you are exempt from the vaccine, just like Biden, just like Joe Biden exempted his his staff and his board and his administration from the vaccine. You ever guys ever wonder why when you go to court, you have to put your hand on the Bible. So help me, God, because the Bible is considered a legal instrument and tool. And so we have to realize and utilize these tools that are right in front of our face that we can use so that we don't have to get shot under our uh, under duress you know we can do this if we want to get the shot let it be our own free will don't force us to get the shot force us to put something foreign into our bodies that we do not agree with. i love that idea i think anyone who chooses to please go right ahead but i also do not like the idea of someone trying to force me that feels so wrong, wrong on every level. So in order to be yes. uh, to qualify for that, they just have to to go to your website and get some of your products. Just go to my website. They can go to my website and they can purchase the Miracle Food Bundle on the home screen, on the, on the home page. When they purchase their Miracle Food Bundle, they can um, easily call in and say, hey, I purchased my bundle and I want to get my vaccination exemption um, paper. And literally... They will, I will email it to them so they can, they can have it and they can print it for themselves, customized for their name, their birthday, and their information. And voila, they will be able to bring that into their public uh, public arena and show that as an exemption of medical exemption and religious, medical religious exemption. 
That is fantastic. And is that also yes. where people go to learn how to do your, your chakra yoga? Yes. Um, the FCA yoga. So the FCA yoga is also on the website. You hit the tab and it's for free. The, the FCA yoga is for free. So you go on my website, click on the tab, hit the, hit the tab that says FCA yoga. And there is a free guided meditation. All you take is your earbuds, put it in your ear, lie down or sit up in your chair and close your eyes and let my voice be your guide. And I take you on a journey to activating all of your chakras and you physically feel them as a physical representation. Got some cool music that is helping you vibrate and helping you raise your vibration through each chakra. Got some breathing exercises, got some affirmation exercises during the meditation. It is a wonderful guided meditation and it is for free. And that's how I started off. I, without FCA yoga, I wouldn't have been able to change my life. Without the power of the chakras and me tapping into the power of my chakras, I'd still be the impoverished mind wondering how to get out of hell versus the enlightened mind that is teaching people how to get out of hell. Wow. Okay. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you for sharing this gift. I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm excited. I got to go check out your website. I did a little bit. I watched one of the testimonials, but I didn't, I didn't explore everything and learn about the, the yoga. So thank you for explaining yes. that because I'm, I'm excited to yes. check that out. I definitely, and, and, and for you, Linda, I would definitely, I can, I can definitely um, activate your chakras. I can, I can activate your chakras for you for free. Um, you know, thank you for having me on. I would, I, I would come on your show and do it, or we can do it, you know, outside of the show and I can show you how wonderful it feels. It takes a little 15, 20 minute, um, it's a, it's a 15, 20 minute version of it. And there is a, um, a long version of it, the, the one hour version of it. Both of them are wonderful and cool. And I would love to show you whenever you have the time. That is fantastic. So the one on your website, is that the short one or the long one? Or do you have both? The, the one on my website is the long one. Aha. The uh -huh. one on my website is the long one. The so one on my website is the long one. And um, the short one, the short one, I just give, I give examples. And I'm about to put, I'm about to post the short one on, on my YouTube channel on the 23rd, I believe. 23rd, I'm going to find a post, post the short one. But I will always keep the long one up there because I want people to get the, that's why it's called full chakra activation because I want people to get the full exercise of what I went through um, creating the guided meditation. If I give you the 20 minute version, you're missing a part of the meditation that, that was created to help you out, you know? So that's why I always let people have the full version on the website. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for everything. I have learned so much and I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. I appreciate it as well. And once again, um, please, everybody just hit me up. 818- 429-1675 where you can go to chakradoctor.org and hit me up. Thank you for having me on. It's been a pleasure. Oh, it's been a pleasure for me as well. In closing, I'd like to share a quote from Oprah Winfrey. She said, the smallest change in perspective can transform a life. What tiny attitude adjustment might turn your world around? Today, I invite you to choose one tiny attitude adjustment that will make your life better. See you next time on Linda's Corner.